Welcome back to the channel. For those of you who don't know, I'm Soph. I'm one half of Becca and Soph, but of course Becca isn't here today and you may be thinking, why not? Well, today I'm here to tell you all about Birmingham Law School and of course that's where I went. Becca went to Warwick Business School, so she doesn't know much about what I was up to during my time at the University of Birmingham. So I just thought we'd do this by ourselves. If Becca's video is already out, please do go and watch hers and you can get an insight into what she was up to at the University of Warwick. So let's get into it. Birmingham Law School at the moment, I've just checked the rankings, is 22nd. That's just UK universities and that is for law specifically. Now within Birmingham Law School, you can do a straight law course, which is LLB. So basically that means a Bachelor of Laws. Um, you might hear of BA and BSc for other degrees, but law is actually LLB. So you can do straight LLB or Birmingham Law School also offer law with French, law with German, and there's things like law with business, law with globalization. So you can kind of branch out. You don't just have to stick down the law line, you can add a bit of spice to your degree. But I chose straight law and I'm here to tell you all about it. It tends to be about 13 hours um, of contact time a week. So that means a mixture of lectures and seminars. Um, predominantly, I would say 10 of those hours would be lectures and three are seminars. That's what it says on the website. And that was kind of the same throughout, I would say all three years. So you might be thinking, oh, that's not much contact time at all. And you're right, it isn't. You have to know that you can be disciplined and like go to the library or somewhere to study yourself and prepare for the lectures and seminars. So it's quite a lot of self-study, but that didn't put me off and it hasn't put hundreds of people off. So hopefully it won't put you off either. I really enjoyed kind of taking my initial learning from the lectures and then doing a more deep dive into the academic study by like reading all the big books in the library. As I mentioned, contact time is made up of lectures and seminars. So lectures tend to be in these big lecture theatres. Everyone on my course would be there. Also people who did like law with globalisation, etc. would sometimes come in too. And you would sit there, get your laptop out or get your notebook out and the lecturer would provide a lecture for you on the module and um, they tend to split it up weekly into different topics if you have any questions you can go down at the end and ask the lecturer if they don't have to rush off to another lecture you can also email them or they have what's called office hours where you can go and visit them in their office at a certain time of the week and ask any questions that you have seminars kind of develop on from your lecture learning and from that independent reading that i spoke about you'll be sent a list of seminar questions beforehand and you have to use your knowledge to answer those questions. So you do all of that before the seminar and then when you arrive there, the lecturer will ask the questions and all of you start like debating or at least putting your argument forward and then you'll be corrected if you're wrong or you'll be praised if you're right and it just sparks a good discussion and as they always say, the more you put into seminars, the more you get out of them. So as well as lectures and seminars, as I said, there is a lot of independent study. So I spent most of my time in first year studying at home in my um, accommodation, university halls. And then in second and third year, I decided I liked the library a bit more. I kind of wanted to separate personal and university life. So I'd go into the library fairly early in the morning to get a good seat and just do any work that I had to do. As I said, you've got to be quite self-disciplined, like have a to-do list and just know like what you have to get done for the week ahead. Some people might scare you because they might have done the work like two or three weeks in advance. Try not to get imposter syndrome from that. Like you go at your own pace and as long as you're organized, you'll get it all done. Over the three different years, you study a range of different modules. Most of them are core modules and you have to do this under the Solicitor's Regulation Authority. But basically all law students have to do like contract, criminal, public law, I think land law, tort law, the list goes on. So you do all core subjects, I think, in first year. But what's nice about Birmingham Law School is they also offer something called widening horizons. So as well as the, I'm going to say it's five core modules, 
you do widening horizons and that's where you choose a module from any other degree which is really cool actually because you can experience something that's not law related and it's a nice way to try something new and kind of switch off from the law side so I think I chose business in the workplace which for me I loved because I'm quite a corporate person anyway like I intend to work in corporate law firms for the rest of my like career so learning more about how businesses operate was really good for me and I managed to do quite well in that module actually just because I had a particular interest in it one thing to note with widening horizons is you are allowed to change your mind so at first I chose maths I was like oh I did it for a level I can do it for uni I could not do it for uni I dropped that within two weeks it was gone I moved to business but don't be afraid if you've chosen the wrong widening horizons module go and speak to the relevant people and get it changed in plenty of time for your exams so back to the core modules in first year I found them really interesting I think it's a nice introduction to the law degree it's not too full-on um, everyone was really like friendly all the lecturers were really helpful and I think I've said it in one of the previous videos but the lecturers as at most top universities are experts in their field they're really passionate about their subject and they're willing to help you so go to their office hours and make the most of their amazing brains <laughs> In second year, you then move on to more core modules such as tort law, land law and the others absolutely escaped me. I think actually it was second year where we did legal theory. So that's quite philosophical. People have mixed views on that. But what I love about Birmingham Law School is they have modules that other universities don't. And that's why I picked Birmingham over Bristol, I think, because Birmingham have more like law in action kind of subjects that's what one of them's actually called but kind of practical law so legal writing how to connect different areas of law we had like a legal connections module um and it just meant like going into the real working world i felt like i had a more rounded view of applicable law like applying law in person um, so that's why I chose it and I don't know if we had any other optional modules in second year. So yeah, I think again second year is quite core module based. I might be wrong. If I'm wrong, my friends, please comment down below. But in second year at Birmingham Law School, what's also unique to the law school itself is something called Kepler and Pro Bono. So Kepler is something like the Centre for Professional Legal education and research something like that and throughout your time at university you get Kepler points so one way to really build up your points is to do a pro bono um, activity and you can apply to be on the pro bono society at the end of your first year and I would say half of the people I know who applied got on it it's quite a tough competitive process and you have to put like effort into the application but they do stuff like um, free legal advice so people can come to the university with a legal issue and you will have to work with your other student colleagues to produce an answer and give them real life legal advice I think it's often signed off by a solicitor like I don't think you could give legal advice and it be seen as the law um, but yeah if it gets the sign off I think that's amazing that you've contributed to someone's like progression when it comes to a legal process or a court case etc um, stuff that I was involved in through pro bono, let's give some personal examples. So in the second year, I volunteered at the Birmingham Employment Tribunal. I was kind of taking the initial um, details of people who were coming to represent themselves. So these are people who can't afford barristers or any legal advice. They'd come on the morning of their court case, or in this case, a tribunal case, and they just want a final few questions answered. So we had barristers and solicitors volunteer their time and then students would take all the initial details and just make sure that the whole day ran smoothly. So that was amazing and a great real world experience in terms of being in second year and getting to like see it in action. And then in third year, unfortunately, it didn't actually go through because of COVID. 
but I was going to help a charity called Women's Aid. So that's with things like domestic abuse and rape and childcare issues. And we prepared this presentation. We were due to go to Women's Aid in Solihull, I think the week or two after. And then we're all, of course, sent home for COVID. But that just gives you a flavour of the type of things you can get involved in. I know some of my other friends like went into schools to teach them about what law is, to get a few more people involved in studying law. Uh, what else? Also with like immigration queries. So really you can be exposed to anything and it's an amazing opportunity to do some voluntary work alongside your law degree. And then finally in third year, this is the exciting part because you can finally choose some optional modules. So you have to do the final core module, which is um, equity and trusts. But aside from that, I think you can choose what you want. So I did things like counter-terrorism law, employment law and I chose to do a dissertation so at Birmingham Law School that is optional you don't have to do a dissertation instead you can just replace it with another module um, but I personally enjoy doing a dis like you can choose your own um, dis leader and then your own title and it's really fulfilling I would say to go to the library every day again to have that discipline and to produce a huge piece of work um, and get it read by some amazing legal academics. So if you have something that you're passionate about, I would say write a diss. The final thing to mention when it comes to Birmingham Law School is of course the Law Society, which is called Holdsworth. They offer an annual law ball, which is fabulous, my favourite night out of the year. So students go to that and so do lecturers and usually the head of law school. So it's just fun to like celebrate all of your achievements and have a great night. Um, the second thing and the main thing is networking events. So I would say how often? Once a month at least they host a networking event, whether that's someone to come into the university who does a presentation first and then you can speak to them afterwards or bringing in like a whole load of representatives from a law firm who you can then network with. They're just really good at providing these opportunities and if you can, I would make the most of them. So yeah, that's all I have to say on Birmingham Law School. I hope it wasn't too rambly. If you have any questions, please do pop them below or you can message us on Instagram at Becca and Soph. Look forward to speaking to you all soon. And if you haven't watched Becca's video already, head to that now. Thanks, bye.